Hi, I'm Timor Dar with The Beat. How are you guys doing? Hey, hey Timor, great. we're great. Timor, nice Love your backdrop. We're yeah, this it. is still so new to, to us that like <laughs> just seeing the image, we're like, ah, 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 that's our that's the podcast. It's us. <laughs> <laughs> Same for me. Um, so obviously, um, the world of Last Airbender, Airbender has exploded in the past year, um, particularly um, almost a year ago when um, Netflix uh, released Last Airbender on their streaming services, and there was just an explosion of fan love. Um, I think it was like number one training topic and it was the number one streaming show um, that first week. So I'm just really curious, was the, um, the development of this podcast in response to uh, seeing that overwhelming fan love uh, a year ago? Or if not, how was, what was the genesis of this Brave New Elements podcast? Sure. Well, I will say um, for my part, I don't think that it, it was not directly tied to the groundswell of love coming out from from Netflix. I mean, the the show has but you're totally right. Of course, that made a huge impact on pop culture. And I think it may have been the catalyst. It was like, all right, we've been talking about doing this. We got to do it. Uh, because this, you know, this is just, there's an absence of this and there's so much to talk about with this show, with both shows, with Avatar, uh, Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, they go so deep, they're so funny, they're so suspenseful, they're so beautifully animated, they're so beautifully written, so beautifully acted, if I may toot the mm -hmm. horn of my fellow cast members. Uh, and, and so, you know, it just felt like we got to get on this. And so... You know, Nickelodeon uh, really, really was like super excited to do it. Obviously, they were also working on the SpongeBob podcast, which is also going to be totally cool. I'm kind of really excited about that, and I love Hector. Um, so, oh, sorry. So, uh, so yeah. So, it, it. I think it acted as a catalyst. But um, I promise you, there's no way we would have gotten through another year without an official companion podcast to all things avatar verse especially not with avatar studios coming down the line um by the time we get through book four of the legend of Korra, we're gonna have probably a bunch of avatar studio stuff to talk about so we'll just be doing this together we're gonna be sitting on a porch swing together drinking lemonade in our elder years still talking mm -hmm. about avatar verse and i am super good with it i uh, me too i can't i can't wait and yeah janet approached me with uh you know, with, with, with Nickelodeon to, to co-host this with her. And I really just jumped at the chance to do a podcast with Barney. I was, she's an OG podcaster. And so this is my first time being on a podcast uh, in this way. So uh, I just thought it was a great, great idea. And it's the right, perfect time for, for us to go back and relive some of our avatar days. That can lead me to my next question. Um, so I know this is your first time, Dante, um, hosting a podcast. And it's kind of unusual circumstances doing it uh, remotely as opposed to um, a studio. Like um, Janet, like he just said, um, you're a veteran of hosting podcasts through Earwolf. Um, so I'm curious, how was, as both a veteran and a newbie, how was um, doing this podcast remotely compare um, to the usual circumstances? Yeah, I mean, it's I think all podcasters kind of had the same experience during COVID if if we were lucky enough to have a means of continuing to do our podcasts, which was, you know, it's there's something that you miss from being in a room together. You know, I was say one of the reasons that that was so exciting that Dante and I got to do this together is that we do cons together. And so we are very used to being together and talking about the show and interacting with fans and answering questions and going to panels. Um, and we've really missed doing that together because there's no such thing as cons right now. Mm -hmm. So this was, this kind of felt like it was, it was kind of scratching that itch in a way. And I hope that we'll be able to do this show at cons together when, when it's safe to do so. Um, the, it's, you miss being in person together. However, sometimes it means you get guests that you wouldn't be able to get in person otherwise. And because of this horrible thing that the world has gone through that we are all trying to get through together and hopefully lift each other up out of, um, everybody's figured out how to use Zoom. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. uh, so there are people that perhaps we would never get to talk to that we are lucky enough to have uh, because it had to be remote. So, you know, there's an upside to everything, I guess. Um, so Dante, um, when I was listening to the first episode of the podcast, 
Um, you mentioned some of the timeless social themes of Last Airbender that resonate especially today. Um, last month during um, Asian American Heritage Month, I finally read uh, George Takei's you know, amazing uh, graphic novel memoir about his time in World War II, the Japanese World War II internment camps. And so suddenly the um, episode where the prison, the earthbenders, where he plays a warden, that really had um, a deeper meaning for me after I read that memoir. So I'm curious about working on um, this podcast, especially in the past year with the rising anti-Asian sect um, and hatred of sentiments, was there, did you feel that this podcast helped maybe combat some of that ha- hatred that was happening in the country? I'd like to think so. I hope so. I mean, you know, this is a show that's very, you know, Asian inspired, anime inspired, definitely culturally. Mike and Brian are are inspired by these other cultures that they're telling a story about. And we got to talk about some of these issues with Mike, with, with Mike and Brian about really respect about approaching storylines and being inspired by certain things and, and having that real respect about that's all we really want to go to walk into it with with, a, with respect and dignity and how you how you approach it and how you and care about how you tell the story um and then also we got to talk to to jenny kwan who we duck we delve deep into uh asian american media like her role my we grew up in the same generation knowing each other as younger actors and being a part of this show and and what these things have meant to hopefully the next generation the generation that grew up with them in formative years and, and the new generation is finding them now so you can only hope that these things uh and these these pieces of art and these stories that we're telling can help combat a lot of the you know the the racism going on today um because it's, this whole this whole story of the avatars about getting the world back into balance and about um overcoming a lot of the, uh, oppressions that we have in the world and so i think this this is in in a real way it's going to be you know to help combat that it may take generations but i think it's the mm-hmm. seeds are being planted for sure definitely um so i know um when the podcast was announced uh, a lot of fans have a lot of uh, wish lists of guests they hope to appear in the podcast i don't know um what guests you can um, say or reveal, but I'm definitely curious if um, the now retired and great voice director, Andrea Romano is gonna be, as is she gonna appear in the uh, podcast? I mean, I'm gonna say it right now, Andrea, you are. So you heard it here first, it's meta canon. Uh, we love Andrea. I was so happy, Dante, that you made sure she was a part of the Avatar reunion that I totally gotcha. just watched live as it was happening and fangirled out about like as it was going on. And then Gray dropped my name, was like, oh, I just, <laughs> Janet, I was texting with Janet and she's watching and I was like, ah, she said my name, she said my name. <laughs> um, so I'll say definitively, unless Andrea for some crazy reason can't do it, of course we want to have her on and keep those suggestions coming. Coming, you know, um, we also we Jonte and I talk about this all the time, but like we promise you, anyone you have ever thought you want to have on the show who's in any way connected to the show is on our list. We yes. are so psyched to talk about every part of the show with far beyond just voice actors, and um, and we're working on it. And we've got some some episodes in the hopper, I guess is the expression. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the thing that is I think going to be the hardest is like we just looking at our content map of our first season of the podcast, we're like, we barely feel like we scratched the surface on guests. Right. So we're going to be, we will never run out of inspiring mm-hmm. people to have on the show to educate us and inspire us and, and like answer fan questions and all that good stuff. It's so, it's so true. Cause it's not only just the great cast that joined the show to play characters or great artists that were able to, you know, to be a part of the whole creation of it. I run into so many people, celebrities, and just fan, just interesting, interesting fans that would be great on the show. That th- how the shows impact them. Like they will, you know. Of course, I play the voice of Prince Zuko, so if they find out, they want to take me to the side. And there's so many people that just tell me how the shows impact them. And we want to get those people on the show sooner or later. Also, you know, that didn't work on the show, but are so involved in the show and and it kind of altered their life in some way, shape, or form. I, I look forward to telling some of those stories too. Janet, Dante, it's been a pleasure. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. This was so fun. Same. Thanks.